Hello everyone, it's Benny, and welcome back to the audio programming tutorial series. In this video, we're going to be implementing a higher level audio interface, just like we talked about in the last video. So, without further ado, let's just go ahead and dive right into it. Now, to save a little bit of video time, I went ahead and created the files off screen, just so, you know, you don't have to see me spending 10 minutes creating files and writing this basic header guard code and whatnot. Also, since we pretty much discussed the entire thing in the last video, I decided I w would go ahead and write out the interfaces as well, because, well, there's really not much to that other than what I talked about in the last video. So, iAudio Data, that's the only one I really changed. I decided to add a get audio length function to this. But other than that, yeah, here you go. Just make sure you have equal zero at the end of your virtual methods, and make sure you have a virtual destructor for everything, so that when you override it, the virtual destructor actually gets called. And yeah, that's that's all there is to it. The interfaces themselves are pretty easy. I'll just quickly show you them all, so that you'll be able to see subtle things I did, like data types and whatnot. Though really, it's, it's not a big deal. Yeah, and there you go. So all we really need to implement, other than, of course, some sort of implementation of the interface, but all we need to do that isn't in the interfaces is the sample info and the audio object. And I'll start with the sample info, and that's going to be really easy. There's a lot of properties you can have in here. There's things like volume, pitch, loop location, panning. For the time being, I'm just going to have a double volume. That's it. Nothing else. So... Yeah, there you go. That's what I'm going to have in sample info. Now, audio object. Now, remember what this whole thing is supposed to be about. If we look in our, well, this, it's supposed to have a sample info and I audio data. And it's supposed to be sort of a wrapper for the audio data so that it can play it with a certain sample info. So, we're going to have an I audio data pointer, which of course means we're going to need to include I audio data. And I'm also going to need to include sample info. Oh yes, so I'm going to call it m data and some. Eh, I guess I can put it first. Doesn't really matter. Sample info. I'll call m sample info. Sure. I'll call this m audio data. Just to be a little bit more specific. And there we go. So to create an audio object, the constructor, it's going to take in. Let's see. Yeah. I guess I'll take in a const sample info reference info, sure, and some i audio data pointer data. So, because of course we're going to need to construct it. But now for the methods. We're going to need generate samples and set position. So I'm going to make generate samples a boolean. So it'll return true if we're supposed to continue, if there's still more audio to, to generate, and it'll return false if we hit the end of the audio file. So yeah. So this is going to take in a float pointer for the stream and some size t for the stream length. Oh yes, and I should probably mention that. The reason I've gone with floats for the stream is just because it's a reasonably independent data type. If I'm using, it doesn't really care if I'm using a, say, int8 audio data, I'm loading that, or I'm loading audio data in 16-bit format. I can pretty much convert it to float, and things will more or less work out. I'll talk a little bit more about that later, but yeah, floating, just float is a general, it's a reasonably format agnostic, well, data type. <laughs> and yeah. So other than that, we need to set the position. So I'll just say void, set pause, and I'm going to make, take this in as a double. So it'll be a double between 0 and 1. And the reason I'm doing it like that is be so that that way th this is independent of the audio length. Th the position doesn't really care, well, how long the audio is. If it's 10 minutes, 50 minutes, 5 seconds, you know, it doesn't matter. 0 0.5 is always going to be halfway through the file, no matter what. So that's why I'm doing it like that. But anyways, we're going to need a little bit more data before we finish this up. We're going to need size t for the... Just, I'll just line it, why not? M audio pause, and some size T for the M 
audio length. And I think that's all I'm... Yeah, okay, and I'll have one more. I'll have a private method. This will be size t. I'll call it pos to absolute pos. It's going to take in some double pos. And this is just going to be the conversion function. It's going to take in a position in this normalized 0 to 1 format and convert it into, well, the absolute ver format, the one that I can set audio pos to. And yeah. And I think that's all I really need for audio object. I think this is, is going to work out. So with that, let's go ahead and let's implement this audio object. And as with the header files earlier in the video, I went ahead and set up this CPP file, the implementation file, off screen. Because this is really basic stuff. It's just moving things we just wrote in the header file into the CPP file. So there you go. And let's begin. Now for the constructor, I'm going to initialize the audio pos to zero. We're just going to start at the beginning. Initialize the audio length. Well, we're going to get the audio length from the audio data. M sample info is just going to be info. And M audio data is just going to be the data. Simple as that. We don't even need to do anything in the main body. We can just do everything in an initialization list. Generate samples I'm going to come back to. I'm, I want to implement the post absolute pos here because this is pretty straightforward. All I'm really going to return is convert to size t position times m audio length. If I can ever type it out. There we go. And there, that's all I really need to do here. It's just converting, yeah, it's converting from the normalized 0 to 1 position to the size t position. So this way, if it's 1, it's going to be the audio length. If it's 0, this is going to be 0. And if it's somewhere in between, this will be somewhere in between the audio length from that. So, yeah. Now for the set pos. First off, we want to make sure the position really is in the range 0 to 1. So if pos is less than 0, 0 0.0, then I'm going to say, well, pos equals 0, 0.0. Otherwise, if pos is greater than 1.0, then I'm going to set pos equal to 1.0. So that way it just stays in range. And of course, at the end, I'm going to set m audio pos to pos to absolute pos of pos. And there, that's the set pos function. So all we have left is the generate samples function. So, as I said, this is mostly supposed to be a wrapper for m audio data's generate samples function. So we can call this with stream and stream length at m audio pos with m sample info. And I'm going to set audio pos to the result of this. And yeah, I'll put this. Hmm. Yeah, I'll break this up a bit. I'll just put these parameters on a new line. Just because that, that was getting a little bit long. But. This has to return a boolean. It has to know if this is the end of the file. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to test if m audio pos is negative 1. And I'm going to say if it is negative 1, then we've reached the end. And, oh, negative 1 cast to size t, because size t is an unsigned type. So if this is the case, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to set m audio pos back to 0, so it's back to a valid position. And then I'm going to return false. Otherwise, I'm going to return true. If I can spell it. <laughs> there. And really, that's all we need to do. I'm going to build, make sure everything's building properly. And there. So we set up really the basic framework for our new higher level audio interface. All we need to do now is implement, well, the interface classes iAudio Context, iAudio Data, and iAudio Device. And we've got our higher level audio interface. But how do we implement these remaining interfaces? When we do, will all these parts really work together seamlessly? Find out next time on the audio programming tutorial series. Hope you enjoyed, hope you learned, and I'll see you next time.